Uh, Syndex Technologies uh, is a company that my business partner and I founded some 22 years ago, uh, which was focused on CRM consulting and evolved over the years into a product and professional services firm. Um, the last 13 of which have been focused in, and it's the reason why we've invited the very select audience here uh, in the commercial real estate sector. And I would say about 90% of our revenues are gener generated around uh, focusing on delivering solutions for commercial real estate companies. Um, and one of the, the reasons why we wanted to bring this audience together was to show you some of the tools that we have created uh, around what we consider to be some enhancement opportunities and augmentation for uh, searches uh, and data mining opportunities that exist inside of uh, the Salesforce uh, product set. So uh, with that said, Let's just jump into this product that we call a Syndic Search, which has been optimized for Lightning um, and is sold on a named user basis, meaning um, you've got 100 users and five of them need the product. No, we can accommodate that scenario. It does work in Classic, uh, but has been optimized for and originated in the Lightning user interface. And so uh, when installed, a Syndic Search uh, deploys as a tab on the tab row, as you can see here. And in this particular demonstration, I have applied this Ascendic Search to a, uh, a an environment that is very commercial real estate. As we started engaging with commercial real estate companies and we saw the need for building out things like property objects and lease objects and availability objects, we quickly ascertained that there was a need to bring in some really rich searching tools that allowed these brokers to go in and mine the data in a self-sufficient fashion uh, across objects in many cases, allowing for them to drive result sets of contacts and or accounts that had relationships with properties and or leases in ways that allowed them to do so very expeditiously and as I'd mentioned, in a self-sufficient manner um, without having to stand at the door uh, of the administrator, perhaps, and ask for reports to be created. And so uh, with that, um, that began the journey of building the Ascendic Search tool. And I'll go ahead and just jump right on into the tool. So um, I think use cases are going to be the best way to pronounce the value proposition of the product. So you've got, um, in this scenario, we've, we're looking for a, 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 a set of accounts where we're conducting a search based off of industries. And so uh, here we have clicked on the Ascendic Search tab and we've dropped down the various uh, objects that we've made available in Ascendic Search, one of which is accounts. And here we wanna go in there and quickly do a, uh, an interrogation of the database uh, for all accounts that we might want to market a particular property to that are in say a, an industry or two. And so. Here we would simply simply select the industry field and we'll go grab consulting and finance and bring that right on into this particular query by example concept where we're just simply filling in the blanks of the values we want to we want to have drive the result sets at which point we click on the search button and it provides us a result set on the left hand side a traditional grid like experience of results. Uh, and then on the right hand side, certainly specific to commercial real estate, is this notion and prominence of location, 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 whether it be the location of properties, leases, listings, and in this case, target customers or, or tenants, if you will. And so we're presenting this data in a very immersive experience, allowing for the results to be displayed in a grid and moreover in this map. And we'll get to this map here in just a moment with regards to additional searching capabilities. Um, we, can, uh, we can, of course, collapse the map and see this in a, this just a solo grid type of a view or bring that map back in. So this gives us one scenario where we're simply going in and mining the data without having to build list views and or reports to, to get that result set. Um, and so that, 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 that's interesting. Uh, and of course, we can go in there and create multiple criteria to really go in and refine the result set. Um, however, where we found that we needed to really solve for uh, was a problem of cross cross uh, search or cross object searching. And so here we see a scenario where we're looking for all contacts, where there is a, a relationship with the upstream account 
and the attributes related to it. So look, let's look for all contacts that have accounts where the industry is equal to or in either the consulting or finance industry. And so this is something, as you know, cannot be done with the list view builder cross object searching. You would have to conduct a report for this or create a report. And so using this simple fill in the blank example, we're able to go in there and quickly create a group of contacts where the account, as you see here, is restricted to just those that are in the consulting or finance industry. And moreover, in addition to using criteria or attributes that are related to objects and not the core object, I can actually do the same thing for column selection as well. You've already seen that I've been able to introduce an attribute of the account object into this grid, but I could also introduce others as well, like for instance, the relationship status, at, at which point I get, uh, the, move that over and I've now got the relationship status as a column in that grid. So this is uh, giving you an example, uh, one of many of cross object searches that are important. Now let's make this real for commercial real estate use case. Uh, imagining that there is in fact a lease object that exists in the database we'd be able to go in and quickly create a relationship between the account and let's just say the lease table. And so here we have uh, a lease and we grab this renaming feature and instead of tenant, let's just make it even more obvious by calling it leases. And now I can go in there and start dra dropping down fields that I'd wanna go in there and conduct a search on, like for instance, expiration date. I'd like to get all accounts that have leases with an expiration date between date A and date Y. We'll just use today's date and we'll advance this to say somewhere in the distant future. And from there, I can conduct a search based on attributes of the corresponding lease, get a result set and get my response. And now we see the map has been restricted to just those that have leases expiring in that time frame. Now, as we continue to have this immersive searching experience, it may be that we want to restrict it even further to a certain geography. So perhaps I'm really only interested in uh, accounts that have leases expiring in this particular geography, at which point I can further filter that down by drawing a shape file on top of the map, at which point it further refines that and provides me the push pin capabilities here. And as I drill down, I can see that the data has already been compressed and restricted to just those in that shaded area. But as I want to go and work from one record to the next, I can click on the push pin and see that I've got an opportunity to view uh, in a preview panel the details of that particular account and any of the related objects. In this case, it may very well be that I want to look at the contacts that are related to this particular account. Or by chance, I want to look at leases that are associated with this account. I have the ability to do that. And as I go from one uh, contact or account to the next, I can traverse that using the map, as we see here, or I can actually just go to the grid on the left-hand side and work my way down the list, seeing not only the detail, but also those related records as well. And so this is a, a wonderful way for a broker or someone who is a professional in a commercial real estate organization to interrogate, mine, and target records, and then be able to in a very expeditious manner, work that group of records without having to toggle back and forth between a detail view and a, and a list view. Moreover, as we get into this particular output and result set, you'll notice that we've made available an export to Excel facility that allows for the quick exporting of data without creating reports, um, which is a fairly common request out there. And we've made that possible, not only using the search capabilities of Ascendic Search, but as you'll see here soon, being able to bring in system views, i.e. those views that were built by using the list view builder through as well, so that if somebody had created a, a view in the out of the box list view builder, they could actually bring that forward and then export that to Excel as well. Now, as we design this tool, we took into a consideration the fact that we were going to be as a horizontal application that would certainly be deployed in the commercial real estate sector, as well as other verticals, we needed to accommodate flexibility in design in that as we ship this product, it actually only recognizes two core objects, the contacts and the accounts. So we needed to make accommodations for a very flexible architecture that would allow an end user to go in there and add additional attributes to existing templates or searching 
layouts as you see here, as well as introducing new objects to the to the searching facility as well. So let's start off by the clicks not code approach to personalizing these searches. So let's imagine as an administrator, we installed a Cynic search and using the page layout, it provided these attributes that we could go in and conduct searches on. Let's imagine we wanna actually add a couple of other attributes like annual revenue, for instance, and wanna maneuver that around so that the account name stays at the top and annual re revenue has now been moved over to a new, a new position. Uh, in addition, we could grant, grab employees as well. And with each of those, we have corresponding operators that govern the result set. The idea of which here is that now that I've personalized this and tailored this to my unique needs as an end user, I can save this as a personal search. And we'll just use Banya as an example that this is Banya's search going forward. And every time he goes to the account object here, he can pin this particular search panel so that that which he feels he needs to go in and search the data on is always going to be available to him right here in this particular panel. So with that said, let's go in and look at a couple of other things. Um, I'm gonna point your attention to uh, the object manager as well. This is an area that shows you that we already recognize all the objects in the object model. And ultimately the administrator will be the arbiter as to which objects are gonna actually be shown in the dropdown that you saw over here. So if by chance, I wanted to bring in, say, the asset uh, uh, object to be uh, searched on. I simply just check the box, hit the save button, and now the asset object would be made available to me in this dropdown, and it would inherit, essentially, the page layout for that particular object. And so it gives us a starter kit of fields that we could start to search the data on, and from there, I could go in and further personalize that on an end user by end user basis, or simply just leave it as is. Um, so that's a little bit of, of the object model and configuration. And of course, as we go back to this object manager, you'll see that there are other columns here that uh, allow us to modify and make changes. One of which is, is the object mappable? Meaning, does it have a geolocation set of fields uh, in the case of accounts and contacts that comes out of the box, but other objects like properties and such might in fact have object or geolocation fields and as such need or want to be use, using the map for filtering. And so let's let's go there and talk a little bit about that concept. And so I'm gonna go to the properties object here, a very prominent object in commercial real estate use cases. And we'll just take a couple of scenarios here. What if I'd like to look for all properties that are of a particular type, in this case, office, that are in a certain geography. And this is a pretty common query um, and so I'll grab, say, a radius search from the Central Business District of Dallas on out and anchor that down. And now I'll get a list of all the properties that are office in that particular geography, at which point I can start to, as I saw showed earlier, traverse those records, looking at perhaps the leases that are associated with those properties and the tenants in each of them and navigate accordingly. So, uh, of I could also work the list on the left-hand side, just toggling through as we did uh, as well. Now, another thing that we've recently done to make this even a more immersive searching experience is to bring what we call an insights panel into the mix. And so here we start off with this very intuitive uh, query by example, fill in the blank template that allows for an end user without any SQL or SQL knowledge to go in there and really mine the database that conjunction with with the mapping really allows them to fine tune that but what we also considered is that a picture really paints another another um, story about the data i'm actually going to remove the filter of office here and show you the entirety of the property records in the database with this collection of charts and graphs and so this allows us to tell a story that it, you just simply couldn't tell with a grid of data here. And you might at first blush go, well, this is just another dashboard. Well, I guess you could call it a dashboard, but really it's an insightful set of, of uh, charts and graphs about the data that you can then further search and filter on and that it's not static. And let's give you an example of what I mean. So this is a list of all the properties uh, by state, uh, by record type, by owner, and by market. But if I wanted to further filter that down and say, well, I started off with 
all properties, but I really only want to look for those that are in, say, the state of Texas. And by clicking on that particular, oops, let me back up here, the state of Texas. And by clicking on that particular chart, it now filters the, the data on the left-hand side and recasts the charts and graphs in the other panels to reflect the data as, a, uh, as it's been restricted down to the state of Texas. Furthermore, if I wanted to go in and say, well, I'm really only looking for those that are in the state of Texas that are office properties, further filtering that, again, recast the data here, and then finally could say, well, maybe I'm only looking for those properties that are owned by Granite Properties in that. And now, without much in the way of, of uh, uh, user manual or what have you, is this result set of properties, at which point I could do a number of things, one of which is to export that to Excel and hand that over to a prospective tenant, a prospective investor who's looking for a portfolio of properties, et cetera. So this insights panel is yet another opportunity for us to put a, an immersive search experience in place for an end user who in the past would have been relegated to either creating reports or someone else having created dashboards for them. And so the theme here is to put tools in place for the end user who would, in my experience, never really want to or be able to um, get master the report writing nor dashboarding, but simply giving them a point and shoot tool like this that's a fill in the blank exercise to go in and, uh, and filter down on the data. So um, that being said, there are a couple of other things that I wanted to share with you on today's call before I open it up uh, for questions. Uh, we sh we've talked a little bit about the saving capability of these various searches. You can also share them. Um, so if you've created one and you feel like others could benefit from a search, you could do that. Um, but very, what, another aspect of this tool that's very popular is this concept of what we call ad hoc lists. And ad hoc lists are really an opportunity for us to selectively choose records and almost tag them into a grouping. So if after having conducted a search, we've got uh, a subjective selection of records that we want to say are target accounts, we could check those and using the add to ad hoc list facility, go in there and create a new, what's this called, Wes's Q1 uh, target account list. It's not built by query. It's really more of a, I've got a number of accounts that I'm working, but I want these to be my target accounts. And so now that we've got that particular list, I can access that list. Uh, as you see here, West is Q1 target accounts. And now it gives me that result set. Now we'll imagine that down the road, we come across another record that we want to add to that. We can go to that particular account record. Let's just bring that one up. And you'll notice that we've incorporated the add to ad hoc list facility within that as well. So we select the Q1 target account list, hit save. And now by virtue of going back to the Ascendic Search dropdown, we can see that in addition to those that I, I added to that first, we now have infinity added to that as well. So that's an interesting way to group records or bind them together without a query. Another very popular example is around contacts. Um, let's just say that we're in business development 101 and we uh, having spoken to a couple of prospective tenants, uh, we recognize in the conversation with Alex here um, and with uh, um, Alfredo that they both have shared with us an interest in, in baseball. And having season tickets, I wanted to add them to uh, a baseball fans group. And so instead of going in and adding a value to a hobbies pick list or, or what have you, I can simply go to the add to ad hoc list facility and see that I've already created a tagging mechanism or a grouping called baseball fans that I've now uh, essentially assigned them to such that when I go back to my baseball fans ad hoc list, I can see all of those that I've selected in as members of this list called baseball fans having expressed an interest in the game. I think that probably does a pretty good job of, of outlining what we wanted to cover today.